Hello, DFC membership. My name is Drew Dittmer. I am a herpetologist and native species coordinator for the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. I've been in the role of Bonneville Basin Coordinator since 2019, which is the last time I gave uh, a Bonneville Basin update. Um, and I've enjoyed the role. I really like DFC. Uh, even though I'm a herpetologist, I have a lot of enthusiasm for ichthyology and native fishes. Um, and this is a great group. All that being said, this will be my final term as Bonneville Basin Coordinator. I am passing the role on to Utah Division of Wildlife Resources Native Aquatic Species Coordinator, Sarah Siegert. Her email can be found at the bottom of this presentation uh, on this title slide. So getting right into updates, the most recent thing that probably merits some uh, mention is that the Center for Biological Diversity, CBD, has filed a petition to list the leash chub under the Endangered Species Act. They sent the DWR, Division of Wildlife Resources in Utah, a uh, letter intent, uh, with their intention to file the petition on the 20th of July, 2021. They officially submitted their petition on the 30th of September, 2021, and uh, UDWR immediately began drafting a response to that petition. Um, pending some actions for the 1st of December, DWR is planning to submit a report with data and counter arguments to the CBD petition. Um, that report is currently under internal review in UDWR's director's office, and uh, we hope to get it into the hands of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service sooner than that, um, but that is our, our timeline for now. Uh, in better news, uh, we recently got a manuscript accepted um, regarding Columbia spotted frog repatriation efforts. Um, Columbia spotted frog do occur in the Bonneville Basin. Um, this population is actually in the Uintas and it represents a historic population that was extirpated and we repatriated frogs into. Um, this was a very long-term effort that was spearheaded by Paul Thompson, who was a regional biologist in Utah's northern region. Now he's a wildlife action plan coordinator and assistant chief of habitat at UDWR. And we worked with Paul Thompson, Shante Lunskog is a regional native species biologist in the Northern region now. And she's been monitoring this population for the last few years. And uh, I helped them cobble together this, uh, this manuscript that got accepted to the Journal of Ichthyology and Herpetology. And very briefly, uh, the, the bar graph at the bottom shows a trend of increasing frog, mass, frog egg mass counts over roughly 10 years. Um, and the figure, the aerial imagery figure, shows some locations with the rough estimates of the egg masses at those locations. Additionally, this manuscript addresses attempts to mitigate the spread of chytrid through our repatriation efforts. So frogs were actually sourced, uh, frog egg masses were actually sourced for this effort from a chytrid positive location. And uh, Paul Thompson describes methods in the paper that were used to mitigate the spread of chytrid. And then we also describe in the paper, uh, Shantae helped achieve one of the most robust sample sizes we have uh, collected to date to test for chytrid in a specific habitat. And we can claim with some confidence that we did not detect chytrid with the samples that we took during the time that we took. Um, and so more to come, we hope we use this effort to guide future repatriation efforts, not just for Columbia spotted frog, but other frogs and toads in Utah of conservation concern. So uh, I don't know when exactly this paper will come out in 2022, but it will come out in 2022. Um, spring snails, mollusks, also not a fish, but does occur in the Bonneville Basin. Um, and so Kate Holcomb is really our malacologist at uh, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. And recently, there was a strategy, strategy finalized in 2020, a conservation agreement and strategy for spring snails in Nevada and Utah. And its purpose is a long-term conservation of roughly 103 spring snails and their habitats to preclude listing under the ESA. We say roughly because the taxonomy of some of these species, the systematics, is still yet to be determined. So that number will probably jump around a little bit. Um, but in any case, if you have more questions about this uh, effort, please contact Kate Holcomb at the email on the slide. Additionally, the UDWR, the Bureau of Land Management, and the Fish and Wildlife Service are implementing conservation actions in the CAS for subglobose snake perg. Um, these include non-native fish removal efforts and monitoring and distribution and abundance of spring snails. And uh, just to help people locate a spring snail in the picture, I circled them in red. Um, they're very small and uh, sometimes hard to tell apart from the strata they live in. We have some updates on freshwater mussels. Uh, we've been 
doing more aggressive surveys for particularly Western Pearl Shell and to some degree winged floater as well, uh, 2019 through 2021 across the basin in Utah. Um, distribution and status information is greatly improving for these species. We have a lot more dots on the map than we used to. And the key techniques that are really working for us are snorkeling and grubbing. Um, grubbing is, uh, Kate advised me to explain it as a raccoon foraging for food in a stream. So it's a very tactile survey, survey method. You use your hands and squeeze your hands through the substrate in the stream bed and try to locate mussels by fuel. Um, and so this, uh, this is a great effort and we've really put a lot more dots on the map and are getting more information about uh, the conservation status of, the, of these species in Utah. And just a quick timeline for this effort. So in 2000, we believed Western Pearl Shell were extirpated in Utah. But in 2010, we found roughly 10 live mussels in Beaver Creek on US Forest Service land. Um, and just prior to 2020 and 2016 through 2019, there was an eDNA survey effort uh, spearheaded by USU uh, to identify possible mussel populations. Um, 355 live mussels were found shortly after that in Beaver Creek. 478 live mussels were found uh, in a 7.6 kilometer stretch of Beaver Creek. One live mussel was found in East Canyon Creek by the USU efforts. Uh, no additional live mussels were found in East Canyon Creek after that, but uh, Goose Creek in northwestern Utah, there were six live mussels located there, and there were four live mussels located in the upper Bear Mill Creek. Um, so we are really putting some more dots on the map and trying to figure out uh, how many populations we actually have and how healthy they are and uh, how best to survey for them and find more. It seems to be one of those cases where if you actually go look for mussels, you tend to find them. Finally, uh, I won't go into too much detail about this. Really, Sarah Siegert, uh, the, the individual I mentioned at the top of the, pop uh, at the presentation, her contact is in the title slide. Um, she's really our lead on June sucker efforts. And so on the 3rd of February, 2021, June sucker were downlisted to threatened. And the Provo River Delta Restoration Project is currently underway. And this project is, is part of the effort to uh, support that downlisting and support continued conservation and restoration for this species. We expect completion of this project in 2023, 2024-ish. When completed, the project will provide important nursery habitat and will hopefully result in higher levels of natural recruitment for this species. Uh, green and blue head sucker uh, are getting interesting. Um, there's emerging research that indicates the systematics and taxonomy for these species is potentially more complicated than we wanted to believe. Um, the Bonneville and Snake Basins are likely two different species. Um, the Bonneville Basin would be the, the blue head and the snake basin would be the previously described green sucker, Pentosteus virescens. Uh, Dr. Ernest Keeley and the student uh, Brandy Smith are seeking to clarify the genetic and morphometric relationships between these groups and UDWR is helping them collect some data points for this. And, uh, you know, the future is uh, yet to be determined exactly, but it is probably going to be two separate species. Um, other updates for green and bluehead sucker, uh, populations of these fish were declining in the Weaver River and the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources has been working to establish a captive brood lot to produce fish for population augmentation in the Weaver River. Streamside egg takes were conducted in 2017 through 2020 and the first year class of fish is going to be spawned next year, 2022. Um, there is some ongoing burial removal work, barrier removal work to support uh, habitat conservation for these species, particularly northwestern Utah, Junction Creek, and also the Raft River drainage. Um, we're going to connect a highly fragmented system up there and provide more habitat for existing bluehead and green sucker populations up there. Um, the bluehead pictured in, uh, in on the right there is the lone individual that was marked and made it to a monitoring location two and a half miles upstream after a uh, repair of the of one of the uh, barriers in that stream that's pictured up in the uh, top right of the of the slide uh, finally southern leatherside chub updates just real brief utah dwr aquatic research is developing methods to efficiently produce southern leatherside and hatcheries at a meaningful scale the immediate goal is to augment populations in the Diamond Fork and Spanish Fork drainages. These drainages were impacted by some recent fires and subsequent runoff, um, and so we're looking to try to restore and uh, revitalize those populations a little bit. 
Um, this is the last slide for my update. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach, reach out to me by email uh, or contact me if you have other ways that you know how to uh, for any questions about Bonneville updates. And also just to double down on the reminder at the top that Sarah Seegert will be taking over this role in 2022. Thank you.